Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today on the bench I want to talk about how to select the proper value of input coupling capacitor for your amplifier project. Now this can apply to various types of amplifiers but I'm mainly concerned with integrated circuit type amplifier chips. The reason for doing this video if you watched my last video when I was reviewing this TDA 7377 board I found at the lower end of the audio spectrum which is often considered to be between 20 and 20 kilohertz it was starting to roll off and why I don't think it was a big deal with this amplifier because most people would probably connect it to speakers that have a much higher roll off frequency I found that it lost about 70 percent of its signal at 20 hertz and the reason for that was the value that they chose to use on this board for its input coupling capacitors. So we'll take a look at this board and uh, tack on a capacitor to demonstrate how we can improve the frequency response of this amplifier. Well the first question to get out of the way is why do you even need an input coupling capacitor? Well Due to the way the input stage is set up in these amplifiers, even discrete amplifiers, there will be bias currents flowing in the input stage that turn on the input transistor so they can handle a signal. And if the amplifier did not have input coupling capacitors and you connected a signal source that had an offset or was able to conduct some of the bias currents from the amplifier itself, that could cause problems. That could cause the amplifier not to function properly or it'll end up with some offset voltage on its output and that might cause some issues with the sound quality and at extreme levels could even damage the speakers. Now I'm not going to get into a bunch of filter theory but one problem with the coupling capacitor on the input it forms which is known as a high pass filter and if the value of that capacitor is too small, it'll roll off your base frequencies too early. Inside the amplifier, there'll be some usually resistors that bias the input stage. And those will dominate what the input impedance or input resistance of the amplifier is. Most chip amp data sheets will show the input resistance or impedance, whatever they call it, on that particular data sheet. So this is what a simple high pass filter looks like and we'll have a of course the capacitor value and resistor value. Now in the case of selecting the capacitor we don't know what this value is and we will use the capacitor reactance formula to calculate that and we'll have to rearrange it but it's very easy to do because you can just swap around our variables here. Here I rearranged the formula to calculate for C, or capacitance, and 6.28 is the value of 2 pi. And we're not putting a man in orbit, so you know three digits is good enough. So you want to plug in a frequency to use in your calculation for F here. What would that be? Well, you don't want to use 20 hertz because this formula calculates what's known as the 3 dB down point or 3 decibels down which is the pole frequency of the simple filter and 3 dB down would be about 71 percent of the full signal and because we don't want that at 20 Hertz we want to select a lower frequency to plug in here so if you want a good performing amplifier I would use 10 Hertz and if you want hi-fi type specs, you should use 5 hertz or below. In case you didn't watch that video, let's take a look at the frequency response of this amplifier board again. And those little blocks there are the input capacitors. And of course there's two channels, so there's two capacitors on each side. And I'm only measuring one channel because, you know, we're not really concerned with the other channel in this case. And it's upside down, but the value of that capacitor is 0.47 microfarads or 470 nanofarads. 
So I have the amplifier connected to the field tech function generator, high quality instrument. And I'll get the camera pointed at the scope here and we'll take some measurements. Okay, I'm measuring at one kilohertz where the response of the amplifier is flat. And see if I increase it, it's going to stay at this graticule where I set it for a reference point on the scope. And you can see 4.29 volts. So I'll write that down. And now I will decrease the, the signal amplitude here. I'm, I mean the frequency. We're at 100 hertz here and it's, it's still pretty good. You can start to see it's rolling off. You know, we're at 40 hertz and it's still pretty close. I mean, it's good enough that I don't think it would make a difference with this amplifier. But at 20 hertz, you can see we have rolled off now. And you can see we're at, looks like 3.05. So I'll punch that in the calculator here. 3.05 divided by 4.29 71 percent so at 20 hertz we're about 3 db down now if i put that into the formula i come up with 22.5 the frequency difference is so small it's not going to make much of a difference it just shows you how close we are getting by calculating and using the oscilloscope Okay, so what I want to do now is see if I can improve the frequency response of this amplifier by choosing a larger capacitor and bringing that frequency response lower so that the crossover frequency, that's another term for that 3 dB down, is crossover frequency. But anyhow, I want to see if I can uh, improve the frequency response of this amplifier. But I need to know one thing. I need to know its input impedance or input resistance. So I can go to the data sheet. Most chip amps will have that on the data sheet. So here is the TDA7377 data sheet. And there it is, input impedance. Now this amplifier is operating in bridged mode on that board. So the typical input impedance is 15 kilo ohms. Okay, so I have what I need to calculate the value of the capacitor. So I can plug in 6.28, which is again 2 pi. 15K, that's the resistance value of this filter. Again, this is what the filter equivalent circuit is. And our frequency, I said we'll use 10 hertz. That'll be good enough for this amplifier to improve its response. So when I ran the numbers in the calculator, I come up with one microfarad. And what I did, I was able to get a one microfarad film cap to fit in there, and just barely fit. There's the old one. So, yeah, I'll test this out, and then I can put the one in for the other channel and be done with it. So let me hook it up to the scope and get some measurements. Okay, let's turn the function generator back on. I'm at one kilohertz. I need to reestablish my baseline signal here. And during handling of the board, I'm sure the volume control got moved. So let me adjust this thing. Yeah, 4.31 is good enough. So I'll notate that. And now I will set the function generator to 20 hertz and look at that the signal is much better 3.91 and I'll also check at 10 hertz 3.19 so let's do the math 3.19 divided by 4.31 so that's 74% so yeah it's roughly close to the 
It won't be exact because, you know, the capacitor is probably rated at 20%. I'm not sure what those are. Plus, the actual input impedance may not be exactly 15 kilohertz. However, let's see what it is at 20 hertz. 3.91 divided by 4.31. Well, we're at 90%. And that, to me, is very good. For people who want to see that in decibels, we'll hit the log button times 20, and it's at negative 84 dB. It's less than 1 dB down, so it, you know, that's, I would say, is a very good substitute. But like I say, if you want to go for the hi-fi numbers, you'd want to put a larger capacitor in there, and it's not really going to fit on that board, though. So there you go. That's how you calculate the input coupling capacitor on the amplifier. Made the response much better with this amplifier. Of course, I'll have to put the other channel input coupling capacitor in on that side. And call this one macaroni. Let me run one more scenario by you here before I wrap it up. Let's say you're making an amplifier that's going to drive only a tweeter or... Maybe you have a, like this board here, an LM386, and it's going to be permanently connected to a small 3-inch speaker out of a radio or something like that. Well, those speakers don't have very low bass response, and it's a good idea not to put low-frequency signals into an amplifier that's driving a speaker that can't produce those low-frequency sounds anyway. For one thing, it's just a waste of power, especially if you're running it on batteries. And if you turn the volume up, the amplifier might start clipping on the bass notes and would sound pretty distorted in that small speaker. So in that case, you might want to use a smaller capacitor just to keep the lower frequencies out of the amplifier. Well, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Turn on the circuit, John. So there you go. That's how you calculate the input. Let's do it again.